Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we're gonna discuss about misting orchids. It's such a gloomy day and it's so cold that I think this is a very appropriate subject for today. So, in my previous video, in which I talked about raising humidity for orchids, some of you mentioned that you were surprised I didn't mention anything about misting, which is a very popular technique among gardeners of any type, not only orchid growers, to actually increase the humidity around a certain plant. And sometimes it's a beneficial thing. For me, it's never beneficial due to the way that I grow orchids. There are some very dangerous side effects to misting. That is why I didn't mention it. I'll mention them today. I'll talk about two main points. One is the actual damage that misting can cause on orchids grown in a home. And second, more of a theoretical idea that might give you some ideas to research about since I cannot really test it, but I think it's worth mentioning. So first of all, what is misting? Well, simple, you get a spray bottle, you mist the orchid, you provide indeed humidity for the orchid in the form of some very, very tiny drops of water that are stationary on the leaves. You might already see where I'm going with this. While it might be beneficial in certain climates, while some orchids might not be affected by this in certain types of environments or ways of growth, for the main part, if you're growing orchids in a home, particularly in winter, particularly when you don't have enough ventilation and the temperatures are low, it can be quite dangerous. And this is only because water can pull into the crown of orchids, in between the leaves and so on. And whenever you have pools of water on an orchid, you risk rotting the orchid, rotting the crown, which is not necessarily a joke, rotting the stem, which is absolutely no joke. I personally don't have an elegant way to deal with stem rot just yet. I might work on it, we'll see. But anyway, this is the major reason why it's kind of dangerous. Due to the way we grow orchids, as you can see, potted, usually in a home, upright, the orchid doesn't really have the shape it would normally have in nature. It would grow like this in nature. In our homes, it kind of goes upright. And even though at some point it might tilt, the stem is still quite vertical. It's in no way horizontal or anything, so water will always pull in between the leaves. That's what you want to avoid. When you mist, you risk the chance of making some tiny little pools that will not evaporate in time if certain conditions are met. And as it just so happens, uh, those conditions are easy to meet in my greenhouse right now. It is very cold, as you will see. It is very humid, it's pouring outside. Misting my orchids is out of the question. Now, the second potential problem is more to do with how much the stomatas open. Let's rewind a little bit. I was telling you in my previous video that in, on the underside of the leaf, you have the breathing mechanism of an orchid, meaning the stomatas, which open and close. Through this opening and closing, there is the gas exchange, but also the orchid loses water. Good thing about epiphytic orchids in general is that they can regulate the opening of the stomatas. If things are pretty dry in their environment, they will not open them all the way. They will regulate this opening just so they don't lose tremendous amounts of water. And they do so by sensing the humidity in the air. When you miss the orchid, you create this false illusion that the environment is really, really humid. So what the orchid potentially does, I cannot test this. So what it potentially does is open the stomatas fully to absorb as much humidity as possible and to make the gas exchange and all of that. And that water that you missed will potentially dry out very fast. And by the time the stomatas figure out that, wait, it's actually not that humid and start to close, the orchid might have already lost more water than it actually absorbed. Again, I cannot test this. It's a theory that I read. If I find the article, I'll link it down below. If not, it's just an idea for you to research more or to at least filter through your judgment and see if it makes any sense. To me, it kind of makes sense. At this point i need to research it more but definitely i wanted to mention it to you so these are the two major reasons why i don't usually mist the most important one is of course i need to prevent rotting and this really has to do with season with the way i grow my orchids with my environment and by misting we can also talk about showering and all of that whatever action you make to actually put water on the external part of the orchid so not the roots i should refer it to as misting or showering or watering so it's kind of dangerous that's why i don't do it and i don't talk about it most of my viewers are home 
growers, I find that the other alternatives which imply a humidifier and also humidity trays are safer, so that's why I talk more about those and not misting. Although it's a common practice, I'm a bit wary of it. In the same video in which I was telling you about humidity, I also talked about the surface tension of the water. And what I said there was that the more surface tension you have on the water, the slower it evaporates, meaning the less humidity it provides. This is why humidity trays are not like a tray with water. They have some pebbles to break this surface tension. Now I did a little bit more digging and the articles that I find are pretty... Mm. I am not sure exactly what the general accepted theory is, as some people suggest that water tension doesn't have anything to do with evaporation rate. It has more to do with temperature and ventilation and all of that. However, there is a common consent that fluids with a lower surface tension evaporate faster. And not only this, but adding a surfactant, meaning something that breaks surface tension of water, leads to a faster evaporation. What conclusion should I draw? I'm not sure, but I know one thing. I can absolutely test this. And why do I want to test it? Well, one reason. Dust. There is something we cannot really avoid in our environments, pretty much no matter where we grow orchids, and this is accumulation of dust on the leaves. And while on the surface it's kind of easy to remove it with a cloth, when you have a lot of orchids it's not that easy. And also, it's not a good idea to run a cloth or anything on the underside of the leaves because you risk the chance of blocking the breathing mechanism, the stomatas, which is not good. So it's quite tricky to remove the dust on an orchid. So what do we do? We mist and shower. It's the easiest way to remove that dust which can be detrimental for our orchids and in time it will accumulate to scary amounts as you can see on my orchid here what do we do then if it's winter if it's gloomy if we risk the chance to rot the orchid what do we prefer potential rot or dust on our orchids do we mist or not well maybe we can mist and maybe we can make things a little simpler now, the easiest way would be to increase the temperature for our orchid so water evaporates faster. We can also use fans to speed up evaporation. But what do we do when we cannot really use those things? We have 200 orchids, do we go with the fan and blow on each orchid to make the water evaporate? What if we miss something? That's not ideal. So I have a little theory that I want to put to the test. Not sure how it's going to work, we're going to find out together. What I want to do is see if water indeed evaporates faster if we add something to it that breaks water tension. And how I kind of thought of this? Well, I thought about water drops. What makes water drops stay in the form of a drop? And I'll link you down below to an article. It appears that surface tension does have to do something with it. And what evaporates slower on a leaf? The water drops, right? Water drops are actually little pools of water that stay in a tension, have a certain shape. What if we break that tension? Wouldn't water evaporate faster? So, let's test it out. I'll tell you what I intend to do. I'm gonna spray this leaf with pure water. I'm gonna mist it and I'm gonna create some droplets on the leaf. Then to the same water I will add some dish soap, which is known to break the surface tension and I'm gonna spray probably that leaf. This is a little tiny. So we'll probably spray that leaf. We're gonna let it sit for a while and we'll see which leaf actually dries faster. And that might give us an idea if indeed adding a surfactant to the water actually benefits our orchids. So here I have a spray bottle with some water inside. I'm gonna shake it. You see there's no foam inside, there's just pure water in here. So what I will do is mist this leaf, okay? Let's see. As you can see, I have droplets. They're easily noticeable. Now in the very same water, I'm gonna add some dish soap. And here is the same spray bottle, I only added two drops of dish soap. Let's shake it a little bit so you see it foams up. Yep, we do have dish soap in there, and I think it's mixed. Let's see, mm, let's do this leaf. Okay, I'm actually gonna spray again because I forgot there was pure water on the hose here, so let's do it again, okay? Okay, now we know we do have some dish soap here and it's making a mess on my table. Okay, we're gonna leave this sit. I'm not sure how long it's gonna take. We're gonna leave this sit. I have a lot more water here than here. What can we do? And see if there's any difference in the way they dry out. Let's also put a clock here for a good measure. It's 11.16. We'll see how this goes. So quite a lot of time has passed, but look at that humidity and temperature. Things are not drying very fast. But I think we can already see a little bit of a difference. I don't know, this one seems to have the same amount of droplets, while the other one looks a little 
or dry? I don't know. We're gonna do this till the end. We'll see which one dries first. But it's 12 and I need to prepare today's video. Because my videos actually happened in the past. And when you see them, things have already happened. Isn't that mind-boggling? So we shall continue this later. Okay guys, moment of truth. It's getting late and cold and I need to close the greenhouse. This is my orchid. Yep, there is a clear difference. Let's bring you in a little closer. So the leaf sprayed only with water is still wet, while the other leaf is dry, almost completely dry. So there you go, if you mix in a little bit of dish soap in your water, you can actually get a faster drying if you don't have fans or stuff like that. So I think this is more related to cleaning the leaves rather than misting, but overall I am not okay with misting, I do not miss my orchids and when I need to clean them, I do shower them. In the summertime there's absolutely no trouble with that, but in the winter or whenever it's cold, that's a problem and there you go this is why water sits like that and if one of those droplets manages to get inside the crown or in between the leaves there's gonna be trouble most of the times so now it's time to wipe the water from these leaves close the windows and turn on the ac so that's the story with misting, showering, or cleaning leaves. And if you're wondering if dish soap is toxic for orchids, I have to say in all these years I used the dish detergent so, so many times and I really didn't see any side effects. I only used a few drops all of the time and really I didn't see any bad effects. And once when I tried to treat spider mites a long time ago, I literally put dish soap on a sponge and scrubbed the leaves of my Phalaenopsis to get rid of the encrusted mites and nothing bad happened to the Phalaenopsis. So yeah, it's not really toxic for plants, as long as probably you don't overdo it because, you know, everything used excessively is not good. But that's the story. Maybe if you're ever in a situation where your orchid is so, so dusty that you absolutely need to shower it, prepare a solution in a bottle. It can be a spray bottle or a normal bottle that you put some holes in the cap just to make it shower and you can put a little dish soap in that water. And this way the water will actually evaporate faster. Of course, there's nothing 100% uh, foolproof, but there you go. At least you have a little bit of a better chance just in case some droplets remain in new growths, in crowns and all of that. Mind you, if water gets inside the sheaths of the new growth as it's developing, even with soap, it's not gonna evaporate because it will not have any surface to touch the air. You get what I'm saying? As much as you can, don't really put water on your orchids, but if you really must, maybe this dish soap thing will help you. And I hope you enjoyed this video. That's it for today. It's getting night outside. Ooh. So if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe to my channel for daily orchid and plants videos. And don't forget to turn on notifications, that little bell you see next to the subscribe button. Lately, YouTube is messing up. I and many, many, many people, including big YouTubers, are losing views and subscribers and all of that. Not sure what's going on. So yeah, if you want to see daily videos, don't forget to check back. Even if you don't see my video in the notifications you receive on YouTube. Maybe I posted something and YouTube decided it will not show it to you. So alrighty guys, I'll see you next time. Bye! Okay Millennium Magic, what are you up to? Let me show you what she's up to. Do you see that little bump there starting to split? That's something. I'm not sure what, but it's something. And above it, there's another something. What are you up to? Why are you playing with my feelings?